Bible is full of similar testimonies. King David was despised by his father and his brothers. He was an adulterer and a murderer, and yet God used him to kill Goliath, expand God's kingdom, and win battles for the kingdom of Israel. Half of the Psalms were penned by him, and he is a perfect forerunner of Jesus as prophet, priest, and king. Moses was also a murderer and a lowly shepherd of sheep for 40 years in the desert before God used him to rescue all of Israel. Joseph, Jacob's son, was sold as a slave and was later held in jail for years until in one day he became the highest official in Egypt in Pharaoh's court. In the New Testament, we see 12 apostles who will one day sit on 12 thrones in heaven judging Israel. These 12 apostles were nobodies. The Jewish leaders heaped contempt on them by calling them unschooled ordinary men. Many of them probably couldn't even read or write, and yet these men gave their lives for Christ, wrote books in the Bible, healed the sick, and raised the dead. What about the Apostle Paul? He wrote at least 12 books in the Bible, and he called himself the chief among sinners. We imagine him as eloquent, but that's not Paul's testimony about himself. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. Jesus Himself was born as a nobody in a farmhouse to a peasant woman. The scripture says about Jesus, He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to Him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. So why do you think you are not qualified to be used by God for his glory? Why do you let the enemy lie to you and say you're too young, you're too old, you've been divorced, you're a woman, you had your chance and you blew it? Get up and shake off those lies. You grab those lying thoughts right now in the name of Jesus and you throw them as far away from you as you can. God has a plan for your life. Jesus loves you so much that he isn't just inviting you, he's calling you to be part of his father's business. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says about this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God says you are not just a conqueror, but you are more than a conqueror. Do you agree? Do you agree with God's assessment of who you are? Truth is, God believes in us more than most of us believe in ourselves. I want to pray for you right now that God would open up the eyes of your heart, that you would know the hope to which he has called you, that you would realize that there is an adventure waiting out there for you in Christ if you will only believe. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for all who are watching right now. And I thank you, Lord, that you have called all of us, Lord, to the same adventure of working in the Father's business. Father, I pray that you would defeat every satanic lie that would tell my friends that they are not qualified to be used by God. I thank you, Lord God, that eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of my friends what you have in store for those who love you. But Lord, you're revealing it to us now by your spirit. Thank you, my friends for receiving this word for you today.